Hello everyone, Julia Usher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. Welcome back. Today I've got a video for those of you who have bought my Julia airbrush system or are intending to do so. In previous videos I spoke mostly about the airbrush, the gun itself, and how to clean it. In this video I'm going to instead talk about the compressor, what powers the airbrush and provides air to it. As you may or may not know, the compressor is a vital part of the system. If you are supplying your airbrush with too little air, you'll get a speckled spray pattern. If you're supplying it with too much air, you'll end up getting puddling or pooling on top of your product or just having difficulty controlling the airbrush. So what I'm going to do in this video is talk a little bit about why I chose this compressor. I did test about 40 or 50 compressors before settling on this one. I'm going to then talk about how to hook it up to your Julia airbrush in one of a couple of different ways. And then lastly, I'll talk about the unique flow regulation characteristics of this airbrush. It's a little bit different. Actually, I should say a lot different in terms of its flow regulation than most other airbrushes out there. So it's important to understand how that works. And that all happens through the inline airflow regulator at the end of the air hose. But before we get into that, a quick public service announcement. My Julia Airbrush can be found on my stencil partner's site, confectioncouturestencils.com. In addition, YouTube and Teespring have invited me to beta test a new store that you'll see underneath my video descriptions on YouTube where I can sell personalized merchandise and such. And so I'll be selling things potentially like my mug here you see filled with my morning coffee and my t-shirt that I've got on here. I encourage you, since we're in beta test mode, just to go check it out and leave some feedback for me either via email, juliausher at sweetlife.com, or in the comments under this video. So if you get the Julia system, let me run through what you're going to find in the boxes. It'll come in two different boxes. The first will be the compressor box. This is an on-demand type of compressor, which is suited for working with my dual action gun. And we'll talk about the difference between an on-demand and a continuous flow compressor a little bit later in the video. But it's important, I think, to pair your airbrush, the dual action airbrush, with this type of compressor. Maximum operating pressure of 43 PSI. In the compressor box, you'll also get a clear hose. And we'll talk about the virtues of a clear hose in a second. This end connects to the compressor with a little bit of plumber's tape to secure the fitting. And this end connects to the airbrush with this inline airflow regulator for controlling the flow. Then in the second box is your airbrush. Comes in a box that looks something like this. I should note that the airbrush comes with a little booklet of instructions, and I really encourage you to read this before you even get started. It's like a mini 101 on airbrushing. This, the compressor and the system will also come with separate instructions, also important to read before you get started. Almost anything you want to know about airbrushing is in here. The airbrush itself, again, is a dual action airbrush. I talk about this in other videos. To release air, you have to push down on the trigger. To release coloring, you pull back. So it's a two-step process to release coloring. It will also come with a little nozzle guard to protect the needle when not in use, a, an easy to fit cap for the coloring cup, which is essential, and then two different types of fittings depending on the type of compressor you're using. This is the fitting you're going to want to use with my hose, but I'll also be showing you how to fit it with an alternate type of compressor that uses a barbed fitting that just where the hose just slides over the fitting. Let's talk about the compressor and hose features a bit. First of all, it's a relatively high horsepower or, or PSI, pounds per square inch compressor, maxing out at about 43. That compares to about 20 to 25 PSI at the most for most other cookie compressors out there. And often in actuality, those small toy compressors, I call them the tiny ones, are delivering pressures much less than that. If you find you're getting a speckled spray pattern, that's typically because you don't have your pressure set high enough. You need the pressure at about 15 to 18 PSI to ensure a smooth, even spray pattern. So this guy, one of the reasons I chose it is because it certainly delivers that and more. And because it delivers more, it allows you to do even larger applications like cakes and broad scale coverage. Also, the additional output pressure makes it easier to pass metallics and thicker food colorings. Just by cranking the pressure a little bit, it forces that coloring out with more ease. Now, you'll notice it doesn't have a pressure gauge on the compressor itself, which confused some of you when you first got it. 
No worries, it still has fully variable pressure control, but that's all controlled off the compressor and through the precision air control valve at the end of the hose. Just by turning this valve from fully closed to fully open, the pressure ranges from 0 to 43 psi, and we'll demonstrate that in a bit. The other nice features of the compressor and hose system is it's got a clear hose. Because we're designing this for food service applications, we thought it was important that the hose be clear. Most other hoses on other systems are not, but this allows you to see when water is traveling up your line or other contaminants, and it allows you to clear your line before they get onto your food product, which I think is critical. I'll be showing you in a separate video how to clear water from the line, talking about when it gets in the line, and you know, how to remedy that. It's very simple to do, but that will be in a subsequent video. So let's talk about one more feature of my compressor, which is key. It's an on-demand style of compressor, which is the type of compressor that's best designed to go with a dual action gun like the Julia Airbrush. An on-demand compressor is one that once you plug it in, will not sound continuously and will not push out air continuously. It will only push out air when the trigger on the airbrush is depressed and is calling for air. I contrast that to a continuous flow compressor, which most of you will see on other types of cookie compressors. That one will sound off continuously once plugged in and turned on, and it will push out air continuously. A continuous flow type of compressor can be used with a dual action gun like the Julia, but the on-demand compressor is recommended, and I'll talk about why in more detail later. Also to note, an advantage of the on-demand compressor is it isn't on continuously, it only is on when you're calling for air, so it's a lot quieter than the normal continuous flow compressor. Okay, so I want to compare my compressor now to another one that's a continuous flow compressor of similar output pressure. This is about 30 to 40 psi as well. And you'll notice mine is a lot quieter. This is what it sounds like when it's not hooked up to my airbrush, and it's even quieter when it's hooked up to the airbrush because it'll only be making the sound when the airbrush is triggered. By contrast, this is the typical noise coming out of a high output compressor. Even some of the smaller toy compressors are this loud. The other cool thing is this is relatively compact for a high output compressor. You can just see how streamlined it is when I turn it around. It's only about 8 inches long, 4 inches wide, and 6 inches tall. Other cool features, nice portable carrying handle, little suction cups to make it sure it stays secure on your work surface. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Easy to clean surfaces. Also got auto thermal protection, which means if it does get too hot during extended use, it'll shut itself down so it can't damage the motor and you simply need to let it cool down about half an hour or so before you can turn it back on again. And one thing you don't see on this device, and this is purposeful, is a built-in airbrush holder. I typically operate with my compressor not on my workstation, but on the floor, because any vibrations from any compressor, even smaller ones, can disrupt what you're working on. So I don't like to have my airbrush holder on the compressor because I don't want to reach down to the floor to put my airbrush in it. Furthermore, if you've watched my other videos, my airbrush comes with a large coloring cup and a cap. So when it's not in use, I can simply lie it flat on the countertop and have nothing come out. It's safer that way, too, because many of the airbrush holders are actually kind of precarious. And the last great feature is it comes with a lifetime service warranty from the manufacturer Badger. Okay, so let's talk about how to hook the Julia airbrush up to the Julia on-demand compressor, which is the ideal compressor for use with a dual action gun like the Julia. Pretty straightforward. First of all, recall that your airbrush came with two types of connectors. You want to choose the one for, that goes with our quick connect hose, and it is the shorter of the two. It looks like so. And you simply screw it onto the end of the valve here. until it can't go any further. And we're going to come back to that in a bit. Now we want to prepare our compressor. It's nice to have as tight a fit here as possible. So you've got a roll of plumber's tape that's come with your airbrush. You might want to just put 
a single wrap of that on there. I don't think you need much more. That'll just make sure you've got a tight seam. And then the threaded end, the one without the valve, goes on this end. Just fit it on and turn it, screw it till it goes no further. And you want to get it on as far as possible. It shouldn't be hanging off this thread over here. You might get a lot of air leaking out, which will then compromise the air getting to the airbrush. So I've got the plumber's tape on. I may have too much. You really want it to thread all the way on. And mine isn't threading much further than halfway because I've got a lot of plumber's tape there. But I think that'll be fine as long as I don't hear any air coming out of there. I've got a pretty tight seam. It sounds good. So now we're ready to put this in. And again, this is my Quick Connect Clear Hose, which is super convenient because if I'm working with multiple guns in multiple colors, I can just snap one in. And when I'm ready to change out guns, I just pull down on this collar here, put it down, and then bring in the next gun. There's no screwing or re-threading of threads here. So again, snap it in, and we're ready to go. Now this little dial is called the inline flow regulator or precision air control valve and it's what controls the amount of air flowing through the hose to your airbrush. The first step is to locate or know your off position. That's easily done by rotating it fully clockwise until it stops. My off position is up here in the upper left. Yours may actually fall somewhere else around the dial and that's perfectly okay. Just make sure it's fully rotated clockwise and then we'll be ready to move forward and open it counterclockwise for different applications. And when you turn on the compressor with this red button in the back, if it's, if it's closed, even when you've depressed the trigger, I've got my compressor on, I've got my valve closed, so I'm depressing my trigger, I'm not getting any airflow. So you do have to make sure that this is also open enough, usually about a quarter of a turn is adequate for most applications to get airflow. And now I'm getting airflow when I depress the trigger, you can see it's blowing the paper around. It should feel pretty strong at this point. But you'll notice, again, the on-demand compressor, it's turned on, but it's not sounding off. P periodically, it will go on and off without me touching the gun, just like it did there. And let's wait. It might do it again, like so. Every five, six seconds, it might do that, even if I'm not touching the gun. That is normal compressor operation for this type of compressor. Don't be alarmed by that. Sometimes it's indication of a big air leak somewhere, but if it's cyclical like that, it's just a normal part of its pressure relief system. However, it won't sound continuously until I press the trigger. Notice how it's going, releasing air, sounding continuously, lifting up on the trigger, no sound. You not only have to have the compressor turned on, you have to have your valve open, and you have to have the airbrush depressed. For coloring to flow, we pull back on the trigger. That's the nature of a dual action gun. Press down for air, pull back for coloring. I have no coloring in here now, which is why we're not getting coloring. So let's contrast that to setting this up with a continuous flow type compressor. But again, I highly urge you to use an on-demand compressor. It's the type that's designed to work with this gun. And I'll tell you why a continuous flow compressor is a little bit more risky to use with a dual action gun once we get it set up. Actually, two more things before we try the continuous flow compressor. Now, if this does move around, even on the floor, it's got big suction cups on it. Typically, all you need to do is dampen them slightly. I've got a damp cloth here. And really push them down into your work surface. And you'll notice mine is not bouncing around. But if you've got a really slick surface, I can't guarantee it's not going to bounce on all surfaces, and that does not work, then there's non-skid shelf liner material, which will do the trick. Now let's move on to hooking it up with another type of compressor. Okay, so let's suppose you already have a compressor for your single action gun, yet you want to hook up the Julia dual action airbrush to it because you love some of its great features like its big coloring cup and cap, etc. Well, that is possible. I've got a continuous flow compressor here hooked up to the copy cake single action airbrush that it normally comes with. And just to contrast with my on-demand compressor over here, this is a continuous flow, just to contrast, as soon as I turn the compressor on, air will be flowing through this regardless of what I do with the trigger. I don't even have to tr trigger it and air will be coming out. And that's what I mean by continuous flow. As soon as you turn the compressor on, air is constantly pushing through the compressor and out through the gun. So it's blowing the paper across the table. I'm not even 
triggering it. That's the single action gun with a continuous flow. These big compressors also move quite a lot. It doesn't have the suction cups mine does, but we can also put this on non-skid material and keep it from moving if need be. But let's just go ahead and swap out this one and put on the Julia dual action. Again, theoretically, it can fit with almost every compressor, but you're going to have to take extra precautions when working with a dual action airbrush and a continuous flow compressor. So all I want to do is make sure I put on the barb fitting that slides over directly onto hoses. The next step is just to slide the hose over the barb fitting, which, while it sounds easy, can be kind of tricky to do, especially if you're working with multiple airbrushes in multiple colors. This is a, this is a pain, and so it might just be worth it to invest in my hose and compressors to avoid this step. But it's on. Now, remember, this is a dual action gun, so when I turn this on, no air will come out unless I push down on the trigger. And the reason that's potentially problematic, this compressor is continually working with the air having nowhere to go. So what happens is this type of compressor is more likely to heat up and shut down on you or burn out the motor over time because it's not able to release air unless I'm releasing it. So it can be hooked up to this, but the one thing you need to make sure you do is if you're not triggering your airbrush, you have to have this compressor off as often as possible. If it's running with this not being in use, this is bound to heat up very, very quickly. And you can do possible damage to this, maybe even possible damage to the airbrush. But here's how it works. Turning it on, no airflow because I'm not triggering the gun, but I'll get it as soon as I depress the trigger. No airflow because it's a dual action gun. Depress the trigger, airflow. So that's the primary difference. Now, I'm not triggering the gun. This is a prime example of when I want to turn this off because this can get very, very hot. So when not in use, turn it off. If you do that, you should get reasonable lifetime out of your continuous flow compressor and reasonable operation out of your gun provided the compressor has high enough output to deliver a uniform flow pattern to your gun. Again, some of those tiny little toy compressors, which are also continuous flow, are very low output pressure and may deliver a speckled result because they're just not strong enough. So let me clean this up. Hopefully that's all clear. And I'm going to move to back to my compressor and system and show you how it works on cookies using the precision air control feature. So lastly, I want to demonstrate how to work with both regular food coloring and metallic thicker food colorings through use of the precision air control valve and also how to regulate flow in general. Some people, when they first got this, were surprised because there was no pressure regulator on the airbrush itself, but again, it ranges continuously from zero to 43 PSI, but it's all done through use of this precision air control valve on the hose. Now recall, we wanna start by locating our off position, and that's simply done by rotating the dial fully clockwise until it stops and can go no further. My off position is in the upper left. Yours very well may be elsewhere around the dial, and that's okay, but it's important to locate it because all subsequent opening of the dial to allow airflow will be relative to the starting position. Of course, with it closed, no air will come out of the airbrush even with the trigger depressed. We don't want it fully closed for use with regular food coloring. We want it, of course, open. So typically for regular food colorings, I'll rotate it maybe a quarter of a rotation down to the bottom in my case. And I've got brown food coloring in here, well used brown food coloring. And I'm just going to start, get my glasses on, start demonstrating flow here. I don't want this too open because if it's too open, I'll get an accumulation of coloring on my product. So let me just start. I like to start always testing on paper. We'll start with it open a little less than a quarter. So you can see what I mean by if you don't get enough pressure to the airbrush, you'll get a speckled spray pattern. And then we'll open it up and show a clearer spray pattern. So I've hardly got it open, and you'll see my spray pattern's a little bit speckly. So again, I'm pushing down to release air, pulling back to get color. Pushing down to get air, no coloring, pulling back to get color. It's a little speckly, that's because I hardly have it open, but as I increase the opening, now I've got it down to about here, I've got much more uniform spray. And as I showed in one of my previous videos, the nature of the spray pattern will change depending on how close you are. So I can be super duper close 
cut and get kind of like a hairline spray, in which case I want very little flow. I'm hardly pulled back on the trigger. Or I can get further away. So it can be very close. And so close now I'm getting an accumulation of coloring. But if I back off, I'll get more and more dispersion of spray. So you can also control this without changing my trigger handling. I'm getting very pinpointy to much more dispersed spray. And I like to work pretty close to the cookie, but relatively little pullback on the trigger. Now I'm getting airflow. I can, I can pull back a little bit here and get very little airflow, or I can pull all the way back. And that's just going to be way too much for what I'm doing. So I'm going to be operating at the front end of the range here because I don't want a lot of pooling on my stencil. And it's better to go gradually, 90 degree angle to the cookie. And if you want it darker, to come back over it. I've got my stencil frame here holding the stencil flat and flush against the surface of the cookie. So I'm about one to two inches away perpendicular to the cookie, and you'll see the nice uniform spray I'm getting. If I get too close, and I'll make a mistake on this one side just to show you. If I get too close, my trigger is hardly pulled back. But if I get too close or stay in one place too long, I'll get an over accumulation of coloring on the stencil and the pooling, and we don't want that. That's, that's because I got too close and I wasn't moving my airbrush continuously. And so that's an area where coloring can possibly run under the stencil. So let's see what that looks like. And again, no need for an airbrush holder. I just do that. And the coloring will stay in. And ta-da, looks great. Nice uniform spray, no speckled pattern whatsoever. Now we're going to move on to metallics. They're notoriously thicker and harder to pass through most airbrushes, but my nozzle is uniquely configured. So even though it's got a small nozzle opening, it's uniquely configured to create more suction than is typical at the output of the airbrush, which allows metallics to pass freely. Sometimes I will crank up the output a little bit here just to help push those colorings out too, but we'll show that in a sec. So now we're going to work with some metallics. You have lots of different options for metallics you can use. Ready mixed ones like Americolor or Chefmaster, there are a host of different brands, or you can mix your own from edible luster powders, which I often like to do because I mix them with alcohol and they're alcohol based and they will evaporate more quickly on the cookie than Americolor and Chefmaster, which are water based colorings. They tend to pool up less on the cookie because of that. Now I have some instructions in my airbrush instructions for how to mix. Typically I mix in a ratio of about one teaspoon of powder to four or five teaspoons of alcohol. You want something that's a very watery consistency. And the alcohol should be vodka. I don't use Everclear, which is a higher grain alcohol, because it tends to evaporate more quickly, even in the gun, and it can lead to more clogging in the gun. So this is vodka mixed in that ratio. You want to not just shake it, but you also want to stir it if it's sat for any period of time to get any sediment on the bottom. So it's completely homogenous when it goes in. We'll test it on paper, and then we'll move on to a cookie and stencil, as we did before. Typically, I can operate with the, if it's mixed to this formulation, I can operate with it in the same setting as I did for regular food colorings, though if I'm finding it's having any difficulty passing, I might increase it to about here, maybe a third or a half rotation. So this is the value of this airflow regulator. You can adjust it to get more output on your product if you're doing a big surface, or you can adjust it to help pass thicker colorings. So I've got it set here. We'll see how that goes. I might need to open it up a little bit more for metallics. So the other thing I have to do is also pull back more on the trigger to get more flow out, typically, with metallics. But I'm going to open it up a little bit more, and it seems to be working fine. So we're going to go ahead and airbrush on the cookie. So I'm pulling back more on the trigger. You'll see my pullback is about halfway back. 
And I want to go a little bit more gradually than I was doing because I got a little bit of pooling and separation of coloring here, which you don't want to get. Okay, so I think that's good. Let's see what it looks like. Ta-da, so nice even spray. There's only a couple areas that are a little bit spotty and that's where I had the airbrush flow too intense and it pooled up and created a little spotting. But that could be rectified by just letting this dry a little bit and going back over it. Okay, and that wraps up this video. It's really as simple as I showed to connect the Julia airbrush to the Julia On Demand compressor and to use the little nifty precision air control valve to regulate the airflow for a range of colorings, everything from regular food coloring to thicker metallics like we used on this cookie. It works very, very well. The airbrush gun itself also has a lot of unique features, including the large coloring cup and cap, dual action feature, of course. If you haven't seen my recent airbrush video, I do encourage you to check it out because it details those features at great length. Also, while you're at it, please check out my new store that carries merchandise like this tea, which says, live sweetly. The mug I showed you earlier, it's under beta test, so I'm collecting feedback now to see how you like it. So please drop me a line on that in the meantime. Till next video, live sweetly. Mm -hmm.